talking about cams. Dave, what are you going to tell me about cams? So, quite different to the bits of protection we've been looking at so far, wires and hexes. Um, we're now looking at active protection rather than passive protection, which means that the device requires the use of moving parts um, for its security in the crack. They're particularly useful in parallel sided cracks, they do work in other placements, but it's really good to have a look as we place a device um, at how it would see in a classic parallel sided crack. One thing about cams is that they come in a range of sizes, but also each individual cam covers a range of sizes in the crack. As you pull on the trigger, the cam gets smaller, and then the springs in the cam, when you retract, make the cam bigger. So that means that this cam will fit a range of cracks from that big to that big. And the ideal is to get about halfway in the range. Um, sometimes that's not always possible, but that's what you're aiming for. This crack here is about the perfect size for the gold member goes straight in and it's about in the middle of its camming range. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some other sizes of cam. The next size up, the blue in this range, will fit in this crack but will become what we call over cammed. So as you can see it just fits in. Um, if you do shove a cam in like that and it's a bit over cammed, what that will mean is the cam's less likely to walk around and move in the crack, but it's also harder to get out. If we take the next size down from the gold, the red, it will also fit in the crack. But as you can see, it's at the limit almost of its size, and that is a less confidence inspiring placement, and also it's easier to make that cam move and what we call walk in the crack, which can mean that it can walk into a section of the crack that's wider and therefore the placement becomes useless, or just annoyingly, it can walk deep into the back of the crack and become really hard to get out. When your uh, friend has pushed this camming device as far into the crack as he physically can and you're trying to remove it, um, you can take a nut key to remove the device or assist the removal of the device and what you want to do with that is try and hook the nut key over the trigger of the cam and then push your fingers so that you can get a bit of force against the device you've got to put your fingers against the tip of the stem of the cam and then pull the cams back with the nut key thereby releasing them so that you can slowly work it out of the crack like that. until it's in a position where you can get your fingers onto it to remove it. In terms of cam design, one thing that is worth kind of noting is that there are quite a lot of camming devices on the market with two stems and quite a lot of camming devices on the market with a single stem. Um, and this does, as you can see from the profile of the cams, make a bit of difference in terms of the way the lobes are distributed along the axle. Um, you'll notice that with a double stemmed cam, the lobes are all much closer together, which sometimes makes them fit better in pockets um, and it also means that in horizontal cracks, such as the one that we've got here, uh, it offers them a little bit more lateral stability. So, placing a cam in a horizontal, um, very similar in terms of the actual execution to placing a cam in a vertical crack, but you're trying to seat it in such a way that it'll be stable. And as you can see here, with this double stemmed cam, it does offer quite a lot of security on that. The only problem here is that if you do actually shock load one of these things, you will notice that you get um, deformation uh, on the stems. Clearly when you use a single stemmed cam, a similar sort of crack, you do get a bit less lateral stability. Um, but conversely, if you do place a double stemmed cam in a vertical crack, um, when it gets loaded, it will load and twist, which isn't so good if there's an edge in the crack. 